please let me have steam. 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 Come on. Come on. Let me have steam. Yes! Ah! What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. <laughs> Hope you liked that intro. Today I want to make a new video about how to repair your dishwasher, but I want to kind of take all of the stuff that's in these other videos and kind of cram them all into one, and plus some other new tips and tricks that I've learned over the last couple years to really help you guys figure out what your dishwasher is, is doing wrong, and how to fix it, and hopefully you won't have to go call an expensive repairman. But before we get started, um, there's something that I'd like to share. So. As you've noticed, if you've been a subscriber of mine for a while, you've noticed that I haven't uploaded any videos in quite some time. And I've had a lot of personal stuff going on in my life and not all of it I really want to share. Um, but I, if you know, um, I am now divorced. Um, that was a two year long process for me. And um, it's definitely not the best of times. Um, and I don't know if anybody out there that's watching this video is going through something like that, um, but it's hard. And whether you like the situation, you don't like the situation, splitting up's hard, and especially if there's kids involved. So first of all, if you're going through something like that and you need somebody to talk to, find somebody to talk to. Go reach out, get a counselor do something okay because you can't just keep that bottled up inside of you it's not it's not healthy and I really just want to try to spread the message I guess um, you know uh, when you go through something like that you really know who's there for you and who's not and that's becoming ever clear to me I got a new job um, at first I was afraid and then it actually became something that was really good. Um, I've made a lot of really good friends, um, some pretty close friends. Um, I'm really happy with kind of how that all turned out. Um, but anyway, I don't want to get all sidetracked and everything. This is about fixing your dishwasher. I understand that. So if you're frustrated, like, yeah, 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 move on, move on, move on. Here, just skip through this. Um, but I just wanted to kind of let people that subscribe to me know kind of where I've been, what I've been doing. Um, it's not that I haven't forgotten about you and I've tried my best to reply to comments as I can, but sometimes it's hard. You know, it's hard to go through all those comments and, and try to help you guys, but I do my best. I really do. I try to help as many people as I possibly can, but sometimes it's just, it's, it's, it's too much uh, on top of my job and kids and working and where he said that <laughs> but you know just on top of everything else um, plus the personal stuff going on in my life but um, probably the most important thing that I wanted to get across to you guys right now before we start this and again feel free to skip through um, but one thing that I've learned over the last two years is that if you ever get a chance to do something you do it don't hold back do it and do it with a hundred percent of you because you might look at it down a few years down the road and you might regret not chasing a dream of yours you might regret not giving something your all and by it's I know a matrix but you got you have to do you have to do you, as someone that I was pretty close to once said. You gotta do you. You do you. And, um, <laughs> stick behind what you wanna do, okay? And don't let anybody tell you different, because you might regret it one day. You might really regret it one day and it might haunt you. Okay, all right, back to the video. 
Anyway, the point of that was chase your dreams. Don't look back, okay? Chase them with all of your might, all of your vigor, all of your everything, and don't look back. Don't let anybody hold you back. Don't, don't let anything, anybody, anything hold you back from doing what you want to do. Because you've only got one life to live, okay? And you should be happy. You should really be happy. And you deserve to be happy. Everybody that's watching this video deserves to be happy. Okay? And you deserve the very best. And it took me a long time to understand that I made... I should, I should have chased my dreams when I had an opportunity to. Anyway, back to the video. So if you guys like this video and this really helps you, be sure to click that thumbs up button for me. It really helps the algorithm out and subscribe to my channel so that you get new awesome stuff. All right, so I'm gonna break these down just like I did in the other video, but here's what you should be doing. So if, you're, if your dishwasher is not heating your dishes um, and heating the water and cleaning your, heating your dishes, what do I mean? If your dishwasher is not heating the water and steaming, um, as you can see mine is. So most of these are for a GE dishwasher, but some of the principles apply to other dishwashers. So first things first, on a GE dishwasher, or really any dishwasher, before you start a load of dishes, make sure that you're loading them properly, okay? And to load them properly, every dishwasher is different. So what you'll need to do is go through your owner's manual that comes with your dishwasher, or look up your model number, search it online, and then it'll have proper dish placement, okay? So I get a lot of people saying, my dishes aren't coming out clean. Um, it's steaming, but they're still not coming out clean. I get soap left in my dispenser. Nine times out of 10, the soap left in the dispenser is either what kind of, dis what kind of soap that you're using, or there's actually a dish stuck up against the little uh, pop thing that opens up, and uh, or the <laughs> pop thing, the, the, dis the dispenser, the detergent dispenser, so whenever it pops open, there's a dish that kind of holds it in place, or there's a dish blocking the flow of water to that. So you want to check that. And most of the time at the bottom, you just want plates, at least in the front row closest to the door. So that way, when the water shoots through, it actually has a clear shot straight through. So if you're putting like big pots and pans and stuff in there, the bottom and then the top really has a hard time getting to that soap dispenser, okay? So that's first, right? Um, if your dishes aren't getting clean. Um, before you start any load, right, run your hot water and at your sink, um, wherever you hook your dishwasher up to. So some people may have one of those that just float around in your kitchen. So wherever you roll your dishwasher to, or you, you know, it's hooked up to, run the hot water till it gets to maximum temperature, okay? Um, you can use a thermal gun if you want to, but you know, 60 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever, every house is different run it till it gets the hot water and then start your dishwasher. What that's gonna do is prime the dishwasher for the hottest water that you have immediately. So if there's no cold water, run hot water first, okay? That's pretty much just everyday maintenance and how do you not really use your dishwasher, but you wanna load your dishes properly and before you run a load, you want to run the hot water first, okay? Second thing, if you've done that and you're still not getting dishes, this is gonna sound silly, okay? But if you're still not getting dishes, if you're still not getting clean dishes and you don't have steam, fill your rinse aid up, okay? And a lot of people say that's crazy, but I can at least remember at least four to five people that have said, hey, I never thought it and I thought that was stupid and I thought that was crazy, but guess what, dude? It actually worked. So I don't see the point in not trying that. Um, it's helped a few people and people that were kind of, you know, hey man, I don't know if that's gonna work or not, but it helped them out. So give that a shot, okay? Um, the second thing, if you got a GE dishwasher, you will have a flood switch, okay? In the, in the um, kind of older models, like five years, and I'd say most of the people that are watching these, this video or these videos, um, they have a flood switch, okay? If, if filling your inside doesn't work, that's the next thing that I would do, okay? 
nine time nine point nine 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 times out of ten on all the comments you can look down through the comments on my other videos if you replace the flood switch it's gonna fix the issue time of this making of this video if you need either of those they're in the link and actually anything that I post in with you know if that helps your dishwasher be it dishwasher cleaner tablets um, rinse aid um, a high quality dish detergent the flood switch or even the control panel and we'll get to that in a minute i'll link all that stuff down in the description below so it's easy to find for you guys um, and any purchase that's made there does help the channel just a little bit um, so i really appreciate that uh, that does help support me and make new great awesome content for you guys um, so the third thing that i would i would uh, look at so if you replaced your flood switch the third thing it's called the thermal cutoff switch okay and some of your some of your dishwashers they don't have a flood switch they actually have a flood stem so on a flood switch and if you want to know where the flood switch is at and all that the flood switch for this dishwasher is right underneath that gray piece you just take that unscrew that cap and then you unscrew those two nuts by the sprayer arm right there and it's uh Ugh, it's right there, that little gray piece sticking up, and man, I need to clean mine. All right, so the next thing is the thermal cutoff switch. So if you've replaced the flood switch, I would say check your thermal cutoff switch, okay? And that is gonna look like this. I'm gonna put a little picture of it right here. Um, it's really hard to get to, so if you want me to make a video on that, I'd be happy to, but it's going to require taking the dishwasher out. Unless you got really small arms, then you're going to have to take the dishwasher out. Okay? But basically what that is, is it's, a, it, it's exactly what it sounds. It's a thermal cutoff switch. So if somehow your temperature limit is reached on your, uh, your heating element, it's going to trigger that. It's almost like a fuse, right? But it's just a little switch that's inside. Okay? So... On the back of your heating element, there's two wires, and on one of those wires, it leads to a thermal cutoff switch, and that will get tripped sometimes. Um, so if it gets tripped, I would look for your heating element may be bad, may be um, getting the wrong voltage. Um, so if it was me, I'd probably check that, but I'd also probably replace the, um, the heating element whenever I was doing that, because obviously it tripped for a reason, and normally that's gonna be the heating element. So the fourth thing, and I've actually never seen this um, ever work before, but if you've tried all the things above, it's the control board. The control board's gonna be right underneath it. Normally it's on the, if you're looking at the dishwasher, it's on the right hand side, just up underneath. Um, kind of back up in there a little bit. Uh, you might be able to get to it without taking the dishwasher out, but you probably will have to take the dishwasher out and lean it up underneath get to it that way um, if you want to take the dishwasher out my best recommendation and again this is really only for trained professionals um, just to be on the safe side so I'm not recommending this for you to do this I'm just recommending that you be safe and if you have any questions call a professional um, and this is really for entertainment purposes only um, turn the power off to your dishwasher okay the best way I do is I open the door, I go to my breaker and I flip the dishwasher breaker and then I go back to the door and if the lights are off, I press a few buttons, I try to start it, make sure there's no power to that. Then once you've got it, once you got it open, then go with the multimeter, check the wires, just the double triple check and all that because um, you want to be safe, okay? Your life is not worth the dishwasher, your life is very valuable. And very important and you only have one life to live on this earth so use it wisely be very 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 careful okay um, so what have we learned let's just kind of summarize everything one the first thing that we've learned is if you got a dream go chase it okay the next thing that we've learned is if your dishwasher's soap dispenser is not uh, is not getting cleaned out every time you rinse it check how you're loading the dishes and you do that through your manual uh, you also want to run the hot water for at least 30 to 60 seconds until it reaches maximum temperature okay before you load your dishes 
Make sure you're using the high quality rinse aid and make sure you're using the high quality dish detergent, okay? The next thing, if you're still not getting steam in your dishwasher, you want to um, fill up your rinse aid first. If you filled up your rinse aid, you ran a cycle, it's still not working, replace the flood switch. If you've replaced your flood switch and you're like, this guy don't know what he's talking about, just bear with me, okay? Read through all the comments. And if you want help replacing your flood switch, I have another video on that. Just go search through my channel, subscribe to my channel, look through. Um, I have a complete tutorial where I basically show you almost everything, every tool that you'll need, every, every, everything on how to replace it, okay? Um, that's probably the best way to replace it. Um, you've replaced your flood switch and it's still not working. Then check to see if you have a thermal cutoff switch and if you have a flood stem and not a flood switch. And the way that you, um, I'll put a, a picture of a flood stem right here. If you've checked your flood stem, okay, and, or you've checked where your flood switch would be and it's a flood stem and it's just basically just like one little piece that comes up and it just like, almost like those little cones that would fall into each other. That's what it kind of looks like to me. Um, if you have one of those, then it's probably your thermal cutoff switch, okay, or your heating element. One of those two things is probably it. You don't have to replace your thermal cutoff switch unless it's you flipped it and it's still not working, um, in which case then I would suggest replacing it. Um, if you've done all that and it's still not working, I would either call a, uh, a GE Pro to come out to your house to look and tell them everything that you've done so far, um, and, or I would... Um, replace your control board um, and that's pretty easy there's just a couple connectors on it and a couple screws um, so it's something crazy but you probably do have to uh, take the dishwasher out so if you come into that situation and you're not really you're not ready to do something like that you may be better off just to call a professional have them come out to your house and do that for you so anyway i hope this video has helped somebody whether it be <laughs> mentally spiritually um it just in some way. Um, I really hope that it gets your dishwasher fixed. If you have any questions, comment down below and <laughs> comment anything, okay? Um, I really appreciate each and every one of you. I love you guys. I really am thankful for your support. I'm thankful for the community that you guys have, have helped build. And I, I'm, I'm trying my hardest this year. I had a goal to try to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I really hope that if, if you're so inclined to subscribe, um, that would help me so much. And uh, leave me a comment down below. Like this video. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day.